If you guys are looking for a more improved version of a, of a tea app where you can get your latest celebrity news or you can get your latest gossip and you can also be notified, check out Ask Kirby. In case you guys didn't know, Ask Kirby is a new app where it's, where it's available on iPhone and on Android and you can really keep up with all the latest news. I've seen so many different news on there. I've seen shit about Tasha K on there. I've seen shit about Cardi B on there. I've seen shit about YouTubers on there. And the best part about this app is that it's actually anonymous. You can go out talking all the mess you want and be anonymous. This one story had me dying. This one lady came on here and said, Little Wayne, stop DMing my son. He's younger than you. Oh, wow. Okay. Hmm. Ooh. Um, we're not going to get into that. Check it out. It's a huge thread of people giving their opinions and dragging the hell out of motherfuckers, laughing their asses off and having the time of their lives. So check out Ask Kirby. Link in the description down below. And, yeah. Some viewers may find this disturbing. Your discretion is advised. Hi my loves, it's Destin Choice, and you're watching Choice TV. So for today's video, I decided to do another unpopular opinions. You know, I gotta come through and piss the internet the fuck off all over again. Now, a lot of you guys really like my unpopular opinions, even though it has the entire internet shook the fuck up. <laughs> my last unpopular opinions, I damn near lost over 300 subscribers. I don't want anyone commenting, oh my god, you fat bitch, I hope you die from high cholesterol. It's okay. Some bitches are sensitive. And I like doing these unpopular opinions because it, I get to weed out all the motherfuckers who genuinely don't like me. We're waiting for that one moment to be like, ah, you fat bitch, I'll fuck you up, I'm unsubscribing, I hate you. Fuck you, fuck everything about you. I like doing unpopular opinions. <laughs> Get to weed out all the fake bitches who are here just to be here. Now let me just say this. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but you're not entitled to your own fact, okay? Respect my opinion. If you fuck with me, you fuck with me, and you don't have to agree. Okay? Now I don't want nobody hit me with that whole, oh, it's because you're young, that's why you think that way. Nope. It's my opinion. Oh, you don't really feel like that. You just need to give it a chance. Uh to you. It's my fucking opinion. So I'm gonna fuck up my Chinese food and I'm about to give y'all my controversial and popular opinions. <laughs> the first and popular opinion is Solange's album was trash. Of all people, Solange has like the most potential. And she's ridiculously original. She's original as fuck. Well, probably way more original than her fucking sister. No offense, Beehive. Yes, matter of fact, all offense. Solange is very original, very unique. Her style, her sound. But she just needs to she just needs to hire a better writer. Or Solange just needs I don't fucking know what Solange needs. Her her album was just trash. Like, it was just it was just glorified elevator music. Chris Brown's new song, Wobble Up, Wobble on My Dick, was trash. That song was terrible. It was a disappointment. Show me, show me love, show me that shit. Show me love, show me, show me love. Chris Brown, you make a comeback and this is what you think of? I understand his album is coming out, but if this was a song that he wanted to be the, the face of his entire album that's coming out soon, <sighs> go back to the drawing board, bitch. That song was trash. The only part I like is Nicki's part, and even G E did it better than Chris Brown. Laws against sagging are stupid as fuck and pointless. Why the fuck are we telling niggas how to wear their clothes? If a nigga wanna sag, let him do it. Had this been telling a woman, oh, you're not allowed to wear booty shorts, the whole world would have stopped. But sagging is such a big deal. I don't fucking know. But then again, people say nobody wants to see these niggas' underwear, which is true. Nobody wants to see these niggas' underwear in their ass. Nobody wants to see that. Sometimes it's a little bit repulsive. A lot of the times because they have these these bright underwear colors and it's just annoying. I understand. But don't tell people how to how to fucking wear their clothes. Simple as that. Even if kids are doing it, don't tell people how to wear their fucking clothes, okay? That's all I'm fucking saying. A lot of women say, nobody wants to see these niggas' underwear. Well then, nobody wants to see some of y'all wearing these poom poom shorts. And y'all ashy ass thighs. Sagging is not that serious and there should not be a law. 
a sagging law is just ridiculous. Like in Miami, I believe there was a law at one point where if you got caught sagging, you would get a ticket. And then there's a fucking law in Alabama that you can literally get arrested for sagging if you get told to pull them up and you don't pull them up. The early 2000s era had better music than the 90s era. Think about it. We had a Shanti. We had a we had a Leah's most successful album, Leah. Then we had DMX. Then we had Jennifer Lopez. And then there was Ja Rule. Oh my God. And then we had Gwen Stefani, Pink, Eve. The 2000s era had the best music. EDM is garbage. I think R and B music is kind of dead. When you think of R and B music. All everybody can name is SZA, Khalid, and LMA. That's the only people you can name that do R&B music that are popping. The whole era is dead, to be honest. I don't think anybody in this era, in this 2000, in this current year, is doing anything influential in R&B. Not SZA, not LMA, not Khalid. And then it's so bad to the point where you got people like fucking XXX Tentacion getting nominated for R&B album. And then you got people like fucking Justin Bieber getting nominated for R&B songs. Like, no. Tiana Terry used to cut Kanye West the fuck off. In case you guys didn't know, Kanye West gave Tiana Terry a cold sign. And he's basically in charge of her albums. Producing a lot of her shit and you know, he's a big reason why she's focusing on music again She needs to cut ties with Kanye. Kanye's barely pushing his own work What makes Tiana Taylor think that her work is going to get pushed? Nah, that song Oh, baby, baby, please come back to me That song should have got way more radio play. It should have been a way bigger hit than it was Tyler the Creator is very overhyped to me. I tried to get into his music. I want to like him. I just couldn't get into it. He's talented, I guess, but his music just don't do nothing for me. Like, I can't get jiggy with this shit. Don't see the hype. <laughs> Azalea Banks didn't get canceled because it's fun to cancel her. People say, Oh, why is Zelda canceled? Is it because she's a black woman? Is it because she is easy to cancel? What about rappers who do way worse and promote killing and shit? Listen, Zoe Banks is canceled because she burnt bridges. She burnt bridges before she could even repair bridges. She burnt bridges faster than she could even build some. First of all, Zoe Banks is talented as fuck. Probably one of the best rappers of our time. But let's just be honest here. She was in the studio with Rihanna. She was in the studio with Kanye. And she still ain't get anywhere. Because all she does is run her mouth for a couple thousand streams. I hear about Azalea Banks every week in some controversy. But where's your music? Instagram models are the biggest scammers on the internet. Not Jaclyn Hill, not beauty gurus, <laughs> not YouTubers, Instagrammers. Instagrammers are the biggest scammers because they be promoting these waist snatching shit that don't even fucking work. And then this damn new, y'all heard about this new tea, Teamy? Why the fuck is Cardi B promoting Teamy? Four months after giving birth. And I lost a little bit more weight than I actually wanted to lose, but if, if I wanted to lose all the baby fat in my stomach, I just had to. And um, I want to thank Timmy. Timmy really helped me in the process of losing my baby weight. 
Every morning, well, some mornings, I would drink tea meat to help me curb my appetite and help my metabolism go a little bit faster. And this is how I've been looking. No, I didn't got a light bulb. I worked really hard so I could get my butt looking back like I used to look when I was a stripper. Um, I still want to lose a little bit more fat right here. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just going to chill. And I just want to say thank you, tea meat. Even though I lost a lot of weight, I'm still going to drink tea meat when I eat really fattening food like cheeseburgers and everything and late night snacks. And When we just find out that it got leaked, that she got lipo, how you promoting tea meat to get a flat stomach when meanwhile you've had lipo? Most of these Instagram thoughts have legit had work done. How the fuck are you promoting teas, waist trainers, and leggings to make your ass look bigger? Meanwhile, some of y'all had to fly out of the country because a lot of the shit that y'all are injecting in your asses and titties aren't FDA approved. Instagrammers are the biggest scammers on the internet. Watch out for those people. Watch out for the people who have Instagram boutiques. And watch out for all those motherfuckers who sell those waist trains. Watch out for Instagram models in general who promote shit. They're not to be trusted. They get paid racks to promote shit. I've, no, I've known a girl to get paid over $100,000 just to promote a damn waist trainer. Don't believe them, okay? That check comes first and they're willing to lie to you to get that bag. You've been warned, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Okay, finish my ribs. I'm a little disappointed with my honey garlic chicken because it don't even have that much fucking honey on it, which is annoying. But whatever. Love and Hip Hop Miami is trash. And in my opinion, an embarrassment to the Love and Hip Hop franchise. Have you ever watched that season? Listen, I'm from Miami. And I'm very offended at how they represent my city. Corny as fuck. Most of them are nothing but corny ass clout chasers who we only get like 800 likes. With 30 million followers. These Instagram people ain't shit. The, the cast ain't shit. All of them are corny. Just stop. Like, Mona Scott, what the fuck were you thinking casting these motherfuckers? They don't represent my city. Lame. That shit needs to be canceled. And I heard it got canceled. Thank God. The Confederate flag doesn't bother me. If I see it, I don't care. If I see it, I'm not enraged. If you sit next to me wearing that shit, I don't care. Because you want to know why? After doing some research, the Confederate flag didn't start off representing racism. It actually represented something else. But then the people who wore it were mostly no known for racism and, you know, non-equal rights, rights against women. It's the people that wore the flag that gave it a bad name. But I feel like if we're going to get mad at the Confederate flag, if you're a person of color, if you're Hispanic, Native American, whatever you are, that's what I do. Burn your dollar bills. Burn the Lincoln Memorial. Burn the Washington Monuments. Get rid of the schools that are named after some of these racist presidents and these racist politicians. I'm just saying, I feel like if we're going to be aggravated and pissed off with people who have confederate flags or wave it around in the south, <coughs> keep the same energy with the bills that are in your pocket, okay? And if you want to keep the same energy with the bills in your pocket, please hand over your money, okay? I can take care of it. Speaking of money, I want to give a quick shout out to my sponsor, Car Marshall. If you're looking to buy a new or used car in your area, Click the link in my description down below and check out Car Marshall. If you go looking for a car in your area, they negotiate. Click my link in the description down below, type in your zip code, and you can find sellers near you. Shit, check it out. Out of sight, out of mind. If I see a Confederate flag, I just look the other way. This generation is not fucked up. The last generation was. Why? Because y'all are raising this generation. Let's be honest here. Black people especially don't have equal opportunity in America. I don't want to hear anyone say, but yeah, they do. Anyone can get a job. 
Listen, I remember one time I applied for a job at Panera, right? This was when I was in high school. And I knew a girl who worked there. She was in my math class. And, I, and there was also a boy who, some white boy who sat next to her. Or maybe he wasn't white. He could have been Hispanic. I think he was Spanish. Latino. So, she works there. She's a trusted team member. I have experience. I've had at least three jobs. The Spanish boy had no experience. No job. He was only 16. I was 18. Tell me why he applied. I apply. She puts in a good word for both of us. And he gets hired, and I don't. And I'm like, well, shit. Why did, why did someone with no experience get hired? But I didn't. It gotta be because I was black. Should I have marked white on my application? Maybe I would do the callback? I don't know. Salt doesn't belong on fucking watermelon. I know that's a very popular thing for people from Louisiana to, to do, but that's disgusting. Central Park Five deserves an award. An Oscar, honestly. The City Girls are going to flop. In my opinion, I think the City Girls are going to flop because think about it. One of them is in jail and allegedly pregnant, and then the other one is pregnant. Black people are not taken seriously on YouTube. You know why? Because most of them do fake ass pranks, stupid ass storylines, and do the most inappropriate savagery. White people do a lot worse, but at least it's entertaining to white and black people. But white black people don't get taken seriously for a lot of reasons. And that's why we're not pushed at the forefront, which is annoying because YouTube lacks diversity. The only people that are killing it on YouTube are white people. The view is boring as fuck. All water does not taste the same. It really doesn't. Y'all ruined the Sani water for me because of y'all. Now I have to drink Fiji, the expensive stuff, because apparently they put salt in the Sani and it's bad for your potassium. Nipsey Hussle is not a legend. He did a lot of stuff for his community and I will consider him a hero just wouldn't consider him a legend. Just not a legend. Like his music didn't make any impact. He didn't make an imprint on the world. He just made an imprint on his city, if you're just being honest. Beyonce does not need to rap anymore. I'm tired of hearing her fucking rap. Kaya never made it big in the industry because she has pride issues. She burnt too many bridges before she even built any. No one, nobody, absolutely nobody, memes, jokes, are corny as fuck and I'm tired of reading them shits. It was funny at first, but it got old very fast. Very fast. I think tanning is very weird. When I see white people get a spray tan, I mean, I don't really care that much. I just find it very, very, very weird. Isn't it so odd how white people go tanning to look darker and then some black people who hate themselves skin bleach? Very weird if you ask me. And backwards as fuck. Native Americans and Asians don't get enough representation. I personally think black people have more representation than Asians and Native Americans. Now Asians, on the other hand, they're basically being represented as racist. They're being represented as people who eat shrimp and cats and meows and dogs and shit. And then they're being represented as people who do kung fu in movies. And Native Americans, whenever you see Native American, you basically just see them wearing that feather hat. And then you basically just see them half naked and speaking in tongues and shit. When you see them in the movies and cartoons, it's really sad. Kelly Rowland isn't as popping as she should be, in my opinion. It's because she's fucking lazy. She's fucking lazy. Look at our albums. All of them are like five year gaps. People need to stop comparing Beyonce and Kelly Rowland. They're both talented and amazing performers and dancers and singers and shit. But Kelly's lazy. She might work, but she doesn't work hard enough. So she shouldn't be compared to people like Beyonce or the Sierras. And people need to stop saying she didn't make it because she's another black girl who's a lot darker. No. Kelly Rowland 
exceeded those expectations, exceeded those stereotypes and all the tribes and tribulations. I Sing Out by Cash Doll does not get enough credit for shit. That song is dope. It's a really dope record and it's really sad that it didn't get enough radio play and it didn't hit the billboard. Cardi B didn't make it because she was light skinned. I don't feel like she made it because she was light skinned. I don't think her skin had anything to do with why she made it. She already had a, a personality, she already had a platform, but I do feel like her, the color of her skin gives her a pass and gives her an edge and a lot of platforms. If it weren't for black people, she wouldn't have never made it in the first place. And because black people gave her a platform, she did have a platform in the American market. Then she had a platform in the mainstream market and then the Latin community later accepted her. Let's just be honest here. Her lighter skin and her being racially ambiguous gives her an edge, but she didn't make it because of that. It just gives her an edge. Just because you're Hispanic, it most definitely, most definitely doesn't give you the right to say fuck shit about black people and to say the N-word without, without getting repercussions of it. So let me say, there's a lot of rappers that are Dominicans that always say nigga. Why can I say nigga? Because Dominicans and Cuban are almost the same shit. They're Latinos, my, my, my little sissy. Sis, we are the same. Plus, Cubans are known by being black. I got my skin like this because of my dad and mom. But my other family cousins and all, they are. Let's just be honest here. A lot of people like to say a lot of shit like, oh, I don't identify as black, I identify as Hispanic. A lot of people at my school growing up would always say, Nah, I'm not black. I'm Dominican. Nah, I'm not black. I'm Cuban. Like, a lot of people would always say, I'm not black. Like, they shit on black people when I was in high school. And they had the nerve to say, fuck shit, or the N-word. And when they get called out for it, would say, oh, I can't be racist. I'm, I'm Cuban. I'm Dominican. I'm Puerto Rican. We have black in us. And this is why a lot of black people are very overprotective about who they claim. This is why the black community is this way. Because people only claim us when it's convenient. But when people see me and other people part of the black community, they're black all day, every day. You can't just switch out when you feel like it. It's annoying. Don't claim it when it's convenient to you or when you need to prove a point. That's corny. Little Caesars is actually pretty good for the price. The shit is only five dollars. I think people do too much when they complain about it. In my opinion, there's nothing wrong with the black community not wanting to accept Meghan Markle. If you guys didn't know, Meghan Markle is married, newly married, to Prince Harry. And a lot of the media spend it into, wow, this finally, this finally, um, an African American into the royal family. Um, blackness is being, you know, inserted into the royal family. Bitch, I don't give a fuck, okay? Oh, there's gonna be, there's finally gonna be somebody in the black, in the black community who's, who's royal. And that's what the media try to spin it into. And that's what some black people try to spin it into. Listen, before blacks were snatched from Africa, a lot of us had ancestors that were kings and queens. And now we have textbooks that are whitewashing our history away and basically shitting on it and acting like it never existed. But anywho, if the black community doesn't want to claim Meghan Markle and want to say, oh my god, there's, some, there's blackness in the royal family, it's not that serious the black community doesn't care for her. Because a lot of the black community always says, we don't claim her, we don't care for her. Because a lot of the black community says she's biracial and she never speaks on black issues. So why should the black community claim her with open arms and say, yes, black power, black magic? Why should the black community do that? I know, I, she. if you do your research, I have never seen or heard anything of her. And she's a she's an actress too. She's a known actress. I never heard anything about her speaking up on black issues and doing things to the black community or speaking up for the black community. Like I just have never seen her own it. So I don't think the black community should be forced to welcome her in. Public schools are teaching kids how to be employees. Period point blank. I think surgery is a beautiful thing. I'm a hundred percent pro surgery. I'm all for it. If you want to get a nose job, great. If you want to get your boobs done, great. If you want to get your ass done, great. Love it. I'm all here for it. I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Have you ever seen a look on a person's face when they finally get rid of that insecurity that they've always had their whole life? 
Have you ever seen the the light up expression somebody has when they finally fix their nose or they or, or they finally get their ass done? It's a good feeling for them because their whole life they've always been insecure about something that people have picked apart. I mean, people always bring other people down all the time and tell them. No, your ass is too weird. You have no ass. Oh, wow, your teeth are so saggy. But when people finally get it done, they get shamed for not loving themselves. Listen, I'm pro-surgery. And if it makes you insanely happy to finally fix things, even if you don't feel like going to the gym, it's okay if you don't feel like going to the gym. You want, if you got the money and you want to fix it, great, perfect. I'm, all, I'm, I'm for it. I don't have a problem with Laquisha. Not at all. I don't have a problem with Laquisha. Because to me... It's not that serious. In case you guys didn't know, if you guys don't know, Laquisha is a movie that's coming out in theaters next month. And basically, it's about a white man in his, who's middle-aged who basically gets a job as a radio host and he pretends to be a black woman. You love Laquisha. She's brilliant. I know. Get her in here. You love Laquisha. What's your problem? He basically speaks in a way that makes him sound like a black woman. And he names himself Laquisha to get a job and basically to lure an audience of black women. I know it sounds pretty fucked up, but I don't have an issue with Laquisha. Yeah, he pretends to be a black woman and basically creating a fake identity to grab it. And, 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 and people got to understand, it's just a movie. It's just a movie. It's just a movie. And not only that, if people are going to be mad at Laquisha, we should keep the same energy with Martin. The same people who are mad at Laquisha are the same people who be laughing their asses off. The asses off at Shanae. The same motherfuckers who laugh their asses off at Big Mama. And the same motherfuckers who laugh their ass off at Respucia and Norbert. And the same motherfuckers who love Blame It On Quay. And the same motherfuckers who love Pat the Lucky on Instagram. I'm just saying keep the same energy. I can't have a problem with Laquisha. Because if I do, I gotta have a problem with, with the black men who perpetuate black women stereotypes. Fuck. I came with these damn crackers. Anyways, my next opportunity is just because. Anyway, my next unpopular opinion is just because someone doesn't have an iPhone, that doesn't mean they're fucking broke. I'm tired of people saying, ew, you got an Android? Stop. It's not that serious. Not everybody want a fucking iPhone. Mm. You can support Nikki and Cardi. I hate when people say, whose side are you on? Who do you support? No, I support them both, okay? Why do I gotta pick one? I support Biggie and Tupac. Do I gotta pick one? Absolutely not. I fuck with them both. Simple as that. Don't compare the two anyway. The two aren't even comparable in my opinion. I get why people compare them because they're both current and they're both hot right now. But Nicki has proved herself for the past decade. Cardi... She's new and she definitely has proved herself, but this is somebody who's an entertainer. She's not a lyrical rapper and she's even admitted it. She's not no rapper. She ain't no rapper. In my opinion, Cardi B is more of an industry plant, but I still find her entertaining. It's, I like to make money. I don't really give a fuck about being lyrical. I don't give a fuck about this and that. If that shit don't work for me. I don't care. I like to make shit that's gonna make me fucking money. Not saying she doesn't work hard, but she got spoon fed. A lot of her lyrics and her, her 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 craft, her videos, her budgets, she got spoon fed a lot of things. People always tell me, with well, choice, you complain about racism so much, how about you get your big ass up and fucking vote? Listen, voting will not stop systematic racism. No matter what anyone does, America was founded off of racism. America was engraved into racism. Engraved racism was engraved into the US. So it's not going to stop it, okay? Even if I vote, it won't stop racism, which is why I complain. Because best believe, if it, if it was able to change racism, I would most definitely not be complaining. Going through your significant other's phone is insecure. No matter how you try to turn, flip it, spin it, bop it, weave it, it's insecure. 
Okay? I'm just calling it a spade a spade. It's insecure. Everybody keeps saying that we need another Friday's Friday, the classic movie Friday. Everyone says we need one more. We need a last Friday. Last Friday needs to come out. Apparently it's in the works. And in my opinion, I don't want that shit. I mean, of course, I might check it out if it comes out. But I'm not really here for it if it does come out. I feel like the trailer's going to be saturated with a whole bunch of Instagrammers. DC Young Fly is going to be in it. They're going to try to put a whole bunch of black comedians in it. They're going to oversaturate it with YouTubers. and Trust me when I tell you, we don't need that. I don't need a corny ass, half ass made last Friday movie. I don't, I don't need corny black folks fucking up a classic. That's just how I feel. I don't want them fucking up a classic. Leave that shit alone. Back when actors were fresh, when they were looking for fresh faces. Now, in almost every fucking movie, they're looking for famous YouTubers or a fucking TikTok person to play in an acting role. No! Straight Outta Compton was overhyped. I just ain't like the movie. I've been wanting to sit out loud for a long ass time. I just didn't like it. I just thought it was so fucking predictable and overhyped. Lil Nas X is a one hit wonder. I don't see him surpassing Old Town Road. I mean, he's been taking a long time to prepare his new music, but I don't really see it. I think he just got really lucky with Old Town Road. He came out with a new sound of country and rap, and I think he's going to have to keep it up, but I feel like it's going to get very old very fast, just like Old Town Road, because I'm already tired of that fucking song. Valentine's Day should not be a fucking holiday. Why is it a holiday to buy your loved one flowers and chocolate? Why is it a fucking holiday to take your loved one out to fucking Olive Garden or Popeyes? Valentine's Day should not be a holiday. It just shouldn't. You should be showing the person that you love and appreciate affection and love and taking them out all the time. Jada Pinkett wouldn't be where she is today if it weren't for Will Smith. Will Smith pretty much carried her career. She'd be irrelevant if she never married Will Smith. Let's just be honest. She's a very iconic and successful and memorable actress, but Will Smith turned her into a household name. Cancel culture is fucking canceled. I'm tired of people canceling people one minute and then uncanceling the second. I lost hope in cancel culture when I saw Laura Lee get canceled and then get uncanceled and now she's getting normal likes, normal comments, and people don't care anymore. James Charles, he was getting dragged to filth for all the horrible fucked up shit that he was doing. And he was actually doing fucked up shit. People went from unsubscribing to resubscribing. He lost 3 million subscribers and then gained a million back. Really cancel culture? More life selective outrage culture. That's what y'all are. Dick and Balls Nation are very entertaining. Even though they are colorists and idiots and stupid and trolls, I gotta give it to them. They really do know how to get attention. Like, look at the shit they're doing for attention. They're entertaining. I try my best not to click on their shit, but when I do, their content is like the train wreck that you can't turn away from. When you end up clicking on their shit, the outrageous idiocracy that they pull off is just like a... Wow, they're so stupid. It's like you can't help but hate watch them. Empire should have been canceled rather than Star. Star got canceled and I was so fucking pissed. The finale was probably one of the best finales in television history. And they want to cancel it? They want to cancel it because they don't want to fund it anymore. Apparently Empire makes the most money because of all the brand deals and shit. But fucking really? Empire is trash. My next unpopular opinion is, no one gives a fuck about Jesse Smollett anymore. I'm tired of hearing updates on the case. I don't care. All of us, the entire black community is drained from hearing about it. Okay? I'm tired of hearing about Mr. fucking Jesse Smollett. I'm tired of it. Bow Wow's career ended because he lost his ghostwriters. Simple as that. Big Mouth is lame to me. I try to get into it. I just can't. Like, I really just fucking can't. Like, I, I be watching, like, 
Why are the characters so fucking ugly? <laughs> Young M.A. is honestly top five most lyrical rappers of 2019. But Young M.A. will never get the credit she deserves because she's a woman and because she refuses to change her sound into mumble rap. Tana Mojo is uncancelable. She's like the the cockroach that you can't get rid of. She's that big ass cockroach that always seems to run away into the crack and then come back out when she's ready for attention. She's really uncancelable. There's nothing we can do about Tana. She's definitely here to stay. Cardi B's new song Press is trash. I just don't like it. Maybe I need to see the music video. I haven't seen the music video. The music video hasn't came out yet. But the song is just trash. Like, I'm just like... Come on now, like... The song just isn't good. Like, I feel like in my opinion it's one of her worst songs. I feel like it's one of her worst songs because... She fucking wrote it. If you look at her credits, she's the only person credited on the song. I don't know, maybe Cardi B wanted Shine for a hit record. And she didn't want no co at this time. I don't know. <laughs> Kids are way too young looking in these damn fucking Nickelodeon and Disney Channel shows. They're too young. Back in my days, people who were 25 were playing 15 year olds. And I think that's where it needs to go back to. I, like, I just like when older people play younger characters. Like, But I don't even fucking watch Nickelodeon and Disney Channel. I don't even know why I give a fuck. I'm just a fat hating piece of shit. Having a preference based on skin color in your own community is colorism. See, there's a lot of niggas who say, nah, I don't date dark skins because they too tough, they too aggressive, they, they annoying, they ratchet. And then say they prefer light skins. Okay, that's a self-hating motherfucker. But then... Black women or women of color will do the same thing and say, Oh, I don't I don't date light skins because they have small dicks or they too sensitive. Ain't that colorism? In my opinion, I think having a preference based on skin color in your own community is colorism. It's one thing to say, oh my preference is men who are taller, men who are um um educated and have 15 degrees or my preference is women who um have their shit together and have 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 um six kids i feel like that should be considered a preference i think having a preference based on skin color is colorism undercover colorism that no one really realizes that they're doing it that's how normalized it is that's just my opinion although it is a preference it's so lame when YouTubers ask for donations. I find it so corny when YouTubers say, Hey guys, um, I need help um, because I have a penis stuck in my, in my throat. So if you guys donate to my GoFundMe, you can help me get it out. My PayPal is linked down below. No. You have a platform, you have followers, start a podcast, or write a fucking book, make merch, find ways to make money. I think it's corny when YouTubers ask for money from their subscribers. Unless subscribers are willing to give it to you, that's different. Or if they get something in return, that's different. But begging your subscribers for money, I just find that kind of corny. Especially if they're not getting shit in, in return. Because who knows what the fuck you'll do with that damn money. And this is why people don't fucking trust YouTube. This is why people don't like to support YouTube merchandise. Because people ruin it for everybody else. I think it's possible to be born transgender. People say... Nah, it's just a way of thinking or your parents probably fucked you over. No, I think it's possible for people to be born transgender. It's like it's possible for people to be born bi or for people to be born pansexual. Not all light-skinned people are biracial or mixed. Black people come in all different shades and colors. Not all light-skinned people are mixed. Jumping people is trash. If you're in a fight and your homegirl jump in, she's trash, okay? Jumping is not okay. Let's all be real here. Jumping is not okay. Even if your mom or cousin or brother is getting into a fight, let them handle their own or break that shit up. Public interviews are getting way out of fucking control. So in case you guys didn't know, there's this whole trend going on with public interviews where it's basically kiss or grab. It's one of those things where the person flips a coin and if they flip the coin and it lands on their side, 
the guy gets to grab your ass. But if it lands on the girl's side, she gets the option to kiss you or let her grab, grab, let you grab her ass. I have no problem when it's two consenting adults, but the problem is this is going on in high schools. People in high school are doing public interviews like this. Oh dear God. People who do public interviews really should start putting fucking disclaimers of don't try this shit at home. Wild and Out is getting so boring. I'm trying to force myself to watch it, but it's just not there no more. And I know because I watched it when it first came out in like 2007 and it's just like the 2013, 14, 15 era was cool. The 2016 era was cool. But it just got lame. I just feel like they try to oversaturate it with Instagrammers and corny little comedians. Billie Eilish really needs to switch it up. I like her. But the whole depression sound is just getting a little bit old. I think a couple months to a year from now, she needs to find you know, a new fresh wave or sound. Or people are going to get tired of it really really fast and get bored of it very very soon Billie Eilish please switch it up and my final and popular opinion is people overly misuse the word cultural appropriation not everything is cultural appropriation let's be fucking honest here I feel like people love to point out cultural appropriation when you know white girls wear plaids and stuff or they wear braids and call it cultural appropriation, but it's really not cultural appropriation because it's just a fucking hairstyle. I mean, if that's the case, you might as well call out fucking Nicki Minaj for cultural appropriation. I mean, she was out here putting fucking chopsticks in her damn hair and shit. Cultural appropriation is, is a word that's constantly being misused. I feel like it's only cultural appropriation when people like fucking Justin Timberlake fucking do it and don't give credit or homage to who he got it from. Like, that cultural appropriation, not somebody doing something that's popular. I feel like black people should be glad that we, we should be glad that we could be trendsetters. But my issue is when some people decide to minimize the creator and decide to make it into their own. Like when people want to get fucking bantu knots and call it twisty mini buns or fucking honey buns. Like no, no. Or people get or 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 somebody fucking break dances and they want to call it. Um, ghetto hopscotch or some shit. Then at that point, it's cultural appropriation because just like you can't just take something that was popularized by a specific minority and claim it as your own. Okay, it's mainly white people that are doing that because white people don't really have a culture because they're known for stealing other people's shit. No offense. Ooh, I feel like I lost a nice one k subscribers. But you know what? It's my opinion, and like I said, I'm entitled to my own opinion and. Y'all are not entitled to your own facts. It's my opinion, bitch. Respect it or unsubscribe. Chill. Chill. It's my opinion. But yeah, like I said, that was that for this video. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Give your thoughts in the comment section down below. And yeah, that's that. Choice out this bitch. Thank you. Change my world, you'll never know. I'm different now. You helped me grow. You came into my life and said from above. When I lost all hope, you showed me love. I'm checking for you, for you right on time. Angel of Nothing means more to me than what we share. No one in this whole world can ever compare. Last night, the way you move is still on my mind. Angel of mine. What you mean to me, you'll never know. Deep inside, I need to show you came into my life, sent from above. When I lost hope, 
You showed me love. I'm checking for you. You're right on time. Angel of mine. Okay. Sorry, guys. My voice. I lost my voice recently. And I want to say thank you guys for all the love and support. Um, comment what song I should sing next. And hopefully my voice will come back. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.